I'm gonna show you how to use the tools you're already paying for in Microsoft 365 to automate your workflows. I've got my client Johnny with us today. Johnny runs an international donut chain. Johnny, why don't you tell us the problem that we're trying to solve today? Matt, we have a ton of mundane manual processes in the business. It feels like we are duplicating efforts. Everyone is talking about AI to save time, but that don't feel right for me. Well, Johnny, you're approaching this in exactly the right way. Starting with the problem and then looking for the solution, rather than trying to force solutions like AI into your business. Why don't you give me an example of one of your workflows and we'll work through it together. We have this form where people can request a co-pilot license and submit a business case. Then we have to get someone to check the responses and then find someone to approve it. Once approved, then someone has to raise a case with IT. Johnny, we can easily automate that workflow using a solution called Microsoft Power Automate that's already included in your Microsoft 365 subscription. With Microsoft Power Automate, there's the free tier, which is included in your Microsoft 365 subscription, and that allows you to run basic workflows using Microsoft 365 data and apps, and then you have the paid premium tier. There's different types of license, like a per app license or a per user license, and they allow you to use premium connectors, i.e. things that will generally connect outside of your Microsoft 365 environment, such as third-party apps or Microsoft Dataverse. And if you do need to use those premium connectors, there are some smart ways that you can license them. If you want to talk to me about that, my LinkedIn profile is in the video description. So there's a couple of things that I would like you to do to help you follow along with this video. The first thing is to make sure that you've got the approvals app installed in Microsoft Teams. If you don't use Microsoft Teams, don't worry about this because you can also get the approval we're gonna create via email. So in Microsoft Teams, you need to click on view more apps and search for approvals. You then need to click on add against the approvals app and that will add the app to your Microsoft Teams. Here it is on the left-hand side. The next thing I'd like you to do is set up a simple Microsoft form like this. In our case, we're setting up a Microsoft form where people can request a Microsoft 365 Copilot license, and we're gathering their name, their email, their department, and a business reason for the license. If you'd like to approve something else, create your own form, and you'll still be able to follow along with this video. The next thing you need to do is go to m365.cloud.microsoft and click on apps, and under productivity apps, you should see Microsoft Power Automate, but if not, you can also search for the app by clicking on all apps. So let's click on Microsoft Power Automate. On the left-hand side, if you can click on Create for me, and you'll notice we've got a few different options. So using Microsoft Power Automate, there are many different templates you can use to get yourself started, and then you can amend those templates. That's what we're gonna to do today, but just to explain some of these other options if you want to start from blank. This is a better thing to do if you're a more seasoned user and you want to create a more bespoke workflow. So the options you've got here are an automated cloud workflow and that will be triggered automatically by a specified event, such as a SharePoint file being modified or a SharePoint list item being created or a message being received to a Microsoft Teams channel. The options are endless there. You then have an instant cloud flow, which is something that you will trigger manually somewhere in Microsoft 365 as you need it. For example, you could add a button to a SharePoint site. You then have a scheduled cloud flow, which will run on a schedule. And then you have a desktop flow, which you can trigger via your desktop computer. So if you'd like to create a flow for a particular app or a particular purpose, you can search through these templates or you can browse through here to get some inspiration. In this case, we want to create an approval request from a Microsoft form. So I'm gonna just type in approval. And the one I'm looking for is this one down here, which says start an approval when a response is submitted in forms. So let's click on that. So a few things to consider here. I can see that this flow is going to run under this account that I'm currently signed into. Now, generally it's not a good idea to have company-wide workflows running under an employee's account, because if that employee leaves, goes sick, or is otherwise unavailable, you're gonna either lose that flow or not be able to get into it to fix it. Also, the emails that get sent 
from that workflow by default will come from that user account. So I'd advise you to set up a special system account for running these workflows. And that is also a smart way that you can deal with the licensing issues if you're using a premium connector, but we're not doing that today. So for now, I'm happy that this is running under my lab environment account. So I'm gonna click continue. We now need to select the form that we wish to monitor. So here's our Copilot form and the approvals type. So we've got various options here, such as everyone needing to approve it, having a sequential workflow, or we can just ask for the first person to respond. So that's what I'm gonna do in this case. And then we're gonna click create. And now it's asking for the approvals title. So we're gonna say approval for Microsoft 365 Copilot license and the name of the person or people the approvals are going to go to. So this is gonna be going to Johnny, but I'm just going to put my lab environment email address in here and then press create at the bottom. Okay, so this workflow is already live. So now when I submit this form, it's going to send an approval request to Johnny. But there's a few other things I need to set up here and optimize with this. So I'm gonna go back to my flows and click edit at the top here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually change the name of this form because if I create a number of these, I'm never gonna be able to work out which one is which. So we can change that at the top. So we can expand these different workflow actions by clicking the drop down arrows there. And I can see here, this is going to send an approval request using Microsoft approvals. That will send an email request for approval. And also if you have that approvals app installed in Teams, you're gonna get a pop-up in Microsoft Teams asking you to approve it. And we can see here if the request is approved, we move on to true and the requester is informed of the approval. Otherwise they are informed of the rejection. So we want to extend this workflow to say if it's been approved, we want to email our help desk. So it automatically creates a ticket with IT. So we're gonna do that but also we need to capture a bit more information from that actual form. So that form has various custom fields and by default, this workflow is only really capturing the name of the person that submitted the request. So we need a bit more information. We want to be sending the business reason for the license and the email address and department to Johnny when he gets the approval request so he hasn't got to go digging for information and asking questions about why they need this license. So the first thing we're gonna do is after the form has been submitted, we need to actually capture information from that form. So we're gonna click on the plus button here and then we're gonna search for get response details. And let's click on this one. And then for the form ID, we're gonna select the Microsoft 365 Copilot form that we created or any other form that you have created. And then for response ID on the right hand side here, we need to click this little lightning bolt, which will allow us to use data from the previous step. So click on that and we are automatically capturing the response ID from this initial response that was submitted. So let's click on that. And that is now gonna capture inside this workflow all of the information from that form so I can use it later on in the workflow. So let's have a look at the create an approval request. And we've got the option here to add some details. So at the moment, we're sending Johnny just a request saying that whoever submitted this form has asked for a co-pilot license, but that's all he's getting. He's not getting all of the rest of this information here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to expand this out. And if we click on enter data from the previous step, you'll see that we can now use the data from get response details, such as the name, email, department, and reason for a license and timestamp if relevant. So we can type out a message in here. So let's provide a bit of information, requester, department, email address, business reason for license. Okay, so here I'm gonna click that lightning bolt again and put in the name of the requester from the form. Next to department, I'm going to enter department, email address, and the business reason for the license. Now, if we come down to the bottom, now we want to amend this where it says inform requester of approval, and we want to let them know that a request has been submitted with IT so they know what happens next. There we go. So they're now going to receive a message with the comments, any approval comments that have been added when it's been approved and then they're gonna be informed that a support ticket's been raised. So they're not then wondering about asking people, okay, what happens next? Or talking to IT themselves and duplicating efforts. 
So we're now going to add another action here by clicking on the plus and searching for send an email. Okay, so we're going to do this by Office 365 Outlook because that's the platform we're using in our case, but you can use various other options such as SMTP if you'd like to use a particular SMTP email address or Gmail if you're using Gmail. There's tons and tons of options here. So let's click on this one, click on sign in, and it's gonna ask me to sign in with a particular account. So let's go for this one. So we're gonna be sending this to our help desk. In my case, I'm just going to use another one of my email addresses from my lab environment. And we want a subject here. So Microsoft 365 Copilot license order. Okay, so the body of the email. So the first thing we wanna do is just highlight that the license has already been approved. So we need to capture the approver details. So let's click on our lightning bolt again. And if we scroll down here, we can select the approver's name. So let's click on that. Has approved a Microsoft 365 Copilot license for now click the lightning bolt again because we're going to capture the information from that initial form. So let's enter their name and then put in brackets their email address just in case there's multiple people with that name. Here we go. And we're going to add the approval comments. So again, if we click that lightning bolt, now you'll see under the approval here that we don't actually have the approval comments, even if we click see more. But if you search for comments, that will come up and we've got response comments there. So if you click on that and then the comments will be inserted dynamically into the message there. And we're just gonna add some text here. So we're now gonna save our workflow at the top there and we're gonna run our first test. So at the top, click on test and click on manually and then click test at the bottom here. And now we're gonna go over to our Microsoft form and put our first details in. So for the name, let's put a made up name. Let's go for Bill Gates. Bill.gates at madeupdonutshop.com. He's gonna be in the sales team. And business reason for license, I just really want one, please. Okay, let's click submit. We now go back to our flow and see if it has been triggered. So give that a moment. So I can see the flow is now running and I can see exactly where it is. And the tick means it has successfully initiated an action. So I now need to go and have a look at Microsoft Teams. And I can see here, because I've got the app added, I've got my approval request here from Bill Gates, department sales, email address, and I've got the business reason for the license. So I can add my comments here and approve or reject it. And also if we go into emails, if we're not using Teams or don't want to use that approvals app there, we've also got an email here and I can approve it and add comments there. So let's do it via here, while we're here, and then hit submit. If we now go back to our workflow, we can see that we've had the approval completed. That was successful. It's informed the requester of the approval and it has sent the email. So I can click on these to get a bit more information about each of these actions, especially if you've had any problems and you can show some of the raw outputs there, such as who the email has been sent to and what data has been sent to them. So we go back to my email, we can see the requester has been informed of the approval and this is my email to help desk. So help desk have been informed that Johnny has approved the Microsoft 365 Copilot license for Bill Gates. We've got the approval comments here and we've got the instruction to help desk. So the workflow is working now, but these workflows can sometimes go wrong. For example, perhaps the email account that's being used here or one of the other accounts that's being used to connect to these different Microsoft 365 apps, the password is wrong or the account has been disabled or the workflow just hasn't run for six months and has turned itself off. So I'm gonna show you how to troubleshoot your workflows. So we come back to Microsoft Power Automate here and click on My Flows. And we've got a few options here. So if a flow has been shared with you, they'll show here. So you can share flows with other people if you'd like them to be able to run them or edit them by clicking the three dots there and clicking Share. But otherwise, I'm gonna click on this here and I can see the 28 day run history. And I'll also be able to see whether the flow is currently running or turned off. So flows will be turned off automatically if they don't run for six months. There's nothing you can do about that. Um, you can turn a flow off yourself by clicking turn off at the top and then you can turn it back on by clicking turn on. Okay, so if there's any problems with the connections, we'll see on the right hand side here because they won't have a green tick against them. You can click edit there to edit the connections and troubleshoot there. 
But importantly, we can see the 28 day run history here. And if one of them has failed, you can actually click on that flow and see exactly what happened. This is showing the test we ran earlier and you'll be able to see exactly which action has failed because it will have a red cross against it and it probably didn't proceed with the rest of the workflow. Otherwise, if it ran successfully, then we'll just see a load of ticks. So you can click into each of these and see exactly what inputs and outputs are going through each of those workflows and click here to show raw outputs. So we can see here exactly email addresses involved, for example, and the messages that are being sent. So that can be really useful for your troubleshooting. I hope you found that video useful. And if you did, please subscribe so you don't miss the next video.